In 1998, Busch Gardens Tampa opened a fully themed simulator taking guests on a tour of the sites of Egypt in just five minutes. It lasted for just a few years, before operating seasonally and later being fully closed and basically forgotten. Oh, yeah, it also starred Martin Shaw and Eugene Levy. Let's take an expedition on one of Akbar's adventure tours. Welcome to beautiful Busch Gardens Tampa. A delightfully different kind of family entertainment. Hello, my tourist friends. I am Akbar. He's a tour guide for a new adventure ride. <laughs> Akbar's Adventure Tours, starring Martin Short. He'll show you around the Sphinx. Uh, he's still working out the kinks. In 1985, in the basement of the CN Tower, which was the world's tallest freestanding structure, an attraction would open that altered what was possible in a theme park ride around the world. Experience an unbelievably realistic simulation of space travel. Tour of the Universe. Tour of the Universe, the world's first flight simulator designed by Simex, would use two Boeing 747 simulators that would take 40 passengers on a round-trip space flight to Jupiter. The ride's system and controls were built by UK company Ready Fusion, and they would form the basis for another major simulator attraction at Disneyland just two years later. It would be called Star Tours. After the huge success of the first Star Wars based attraction when it opened in 1987, parks around the world wanted their own version. Many different modified experiences followed, and the early 90s were filled with simulator attractions opening at parks. Disney added a second version of the experience at Epcot in 1989 with Body Wars. 1991 saw Back to the Future at Universal Studios Florida offer their own version of the experience. SeaWorld Orlando's Mission Bermuda Triangle opened in 1992, and overseas, Batman Adventure the Ride could be found at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia, also in 1992. The third installation, however, after the Disney parks, would be at a regional park that would continue to implement groundbreaking attractions. Busch Gardens Williamsburg the general manager at Busch Gardens in Williamsburg is talking about the park's new high-tech simulator attraction. The ride is a 35,000-pound machine that'll take passengers on a fantasy trip through sight, sound, and motion. Opening on June 12, 1990, in the Hastings section of the park, Questor was named after the steampunk-inspired mix of airship and submarine vehicle that you would travel on during the attraction. The ride took you on a fantasy mission to find the magical crystal of Zed. Alwyn, the eccentric gnome-like explorer and inventor, would guide the Questor ship on your highly themed journey on the country's largest flight simulator. The ride would feature two identical ride systems, each 22 by 30 feet and weighing 35,000 pounds. The attraction's story was that Alwyn needed the Crystal of Zed to help complete his life's work. Using guest thought waves to power the Jubilium capacitators required to operate the Quester, Alwyn would join adventurers on screens in the cabin during the guest's experience. The journey took rides through stalagmites, narrow tunnels, over waterfalls, and underwater, before being attacked by a giant lizard. The ride's four-minute film was created by New York-based production company Glynnet and directed by Emmy Award winner Michael Glynn. The Questor attraction had two main aims, to offer an excitingly highly themed experience as well as to be accessible to as many people as possible. Just one year after opening in 1991, the Busch Gardens Williamsburg attraction was refreshed. It was extremely popular, but some considered it jerky and some of the scenes not that great. The second year saw sections of the films redone by Midland Productions, keeping the most popular sections of the past experience and adding new ones. This very same year, Questor would come to Busch Gardens Tampa. We spent years building this ship called the Questor, I think you may have heard of it. And with it, I, I, I can fly through space, I can dive through water. The ride system was actually designed by Tampa-based company Reflectone, who would usually provide equipment for the military. They stated that one of the benefits would be that this ride could be re to a new movie in the future. 
While this new version in Florida was similar, the Busch Gardens Tampa version of Questor would use a completely different theme. Here, it would be Sir Edison Fitzwilly searching for the magic crystal of Z. Sir Edison, the Tampa version of the eccentric inventor of the Questor ship, would guide riders through the same film as found in the Williamsburg Park. Opening on May 23rd, 1991, in the Crown Colony section of the park, opposite the Crown Colony restaurant, which had just been refurbished, as well as the Clydesdale Hamlet, which had recently opened in 1989. The Questor building was designed to fit in with the turn of the century surroundings of the area. The attraction's grand opening featured high school bands to mark the ceremony, while the experience was essentially the same when riding as the earlier Virginia version, it offered something completely different for the Tampa Park. Kumba. The word Kumba means war in the African Congo language, and this coaster really rolls. In 1993, everything would change for Busch Gardens Tampa when Kumba opened. The Mammoth Roller Coaster by B&M would bring a huge attendance boost. Major thrill roller coasters would push the park to over the 4 million attendants. This was seen even more when another brand new roller coaster would open as part of a brand new land right next to Questor. Montu, a Bolliger and Maviar design, opened to the public in the new Egypt section of the park, May of 1996. As of its completion, it is the world's tallest and longest inverted steel roller coaster, and it has a whole host of first-of-a-kind elements. In 1996, Montu and the Egypt area of the park would be added, bringing much more footfall to the previously slow area of the park. It would be time to retire the classic simulator and take advantage of how easy it was to reprofile. Who else would a Central Florida theme park turn to when they needed star quality? It would be time for Martin Short. I am Akbar. He's a tour guide for a new adventure ride. <laughs> this journey's gonna rock. Get ready for a shock. Akbar. He's the great creator of a way cool simulator. Akbar. Ready for the ride of my life. It's our new simulator ride, Akbar's Adventure Tours, starring Martin Short. He'll show you around the Sphinx. Uh, he's still working out the kinks. Akbar! Only at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay. With Disney about to open Animal Kingdom and a brand new theme park coming soon at Universal, it will be time for Bush Gardens Tampa to step up its themed immersive attraction offerings. Announced in December 1997, Akbar's Adventure Tours would take guests on a six-minute ride through Egypt. The attraction would feature a brand new themed entrance rather than entering from the old Questor side, this time located within the Egypt section of the park. It was announced with other projects such as an 800-room hotel overlooking the park safari, expected to cost $100 million, along with an aviary. Akbar's Adventure Tours featured actor Martin Short as Akbar, in a role I'm not so sure would be okay today. He was joined by co-star Eugene Levy as the main hosts of the ride. This new heavily themed queue set up the story and the team working on it would be fully in the role during the experience. The attraction's film was directed by Oscar winner Robert Blalack, who had worked on many films and visual effects, including Star Wars. Martin Shaw and Eugene Levy had filmed their scenes in early 1997 in LA with a week's filming. The project was then shaped around their performances by special effect and model technician from Praxis Films. The shots were then combined with footage shot in Morocco and CGI to create the film. The ride system was redone by Reflectone of Tampa, the original ride manufacturer, to allow two extra dimensions of movement from four to six for the 59-seat cabins. While Questor used 70mm film, the new ride would use high definition laser video with added wind effects and fiber optic. Follow me! Oh, if you would like to see all of Egypt in just five minutes, let me be your guide. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, what's going on here? No, no, no! Oh, no, no, no! Akbar would be an inept tour guide, hanging on to his struggling business. His new idea to try and save his business would be a simulated tour that would take guests on the homemade vehicle, which was originally supposed to be a coach carried on the shoulders of several muscle men, who would not always step in time and keep their balance 
hence the rocking of the carriage. Definitely one of the most unique explanations for simulator movements. I am Akbar, the world's greatest tour guide, and I'm here to unveil my exciting tour of exotic Egypt, made possible by my homemade simulator. <laughs> oh, this is Omar, my number one brother and cameraman. Off you go, Omar. This tour would be all Akbar was counting on for saving his business that was about to be repossessed. Turn it all out. Who are you? Name's Wharton, Stanford Wharton. Why are you stealing my stuff, Stan? Who said Stan? Did I say Stan? Didn't say Stan, I hate Stan. You can't pay your bills, everything goes. Wait, wait, wait. I know I know my payments have been a tad late, but money is no longer an issue because I'm about to launch my greatest tour of Egypt yet. Behold, the ultimate thrill. Looks like a toilet to me. Oh, it's so easy to criticize, isn't it? With Oh, that's the wrong chair. No. After entering the queue, which was lined with advertising posters from the various excursions offered by Akbar, the pre-show for Akbar's tour explained that Akbar, the world's self-proclaimed greatest tour guide, was unveiling his very first ever exciting tour of Egypt on his homemade simulator, which would actually show all of Egypt in just five minutes. Take it away, boys! My baby brothers, Corky and Chip. They don't like it when I'm being picked on. <laughs> hey, what's happening? What's going on? What are you doing? Quick. Allow me to show you, and you for that matter, what you'll soon be experiencing on Akbar's great adventure simulator. Huh. Hit it, boys. Feel the hot Egyptian sun. Oh, don't you wish you had some sunblock? Get it? It's simulated. <laughs> Getting very angry. To the Sahara sand dunes. Oh. Roll down Raging Nile! Oh, yes! <laughs> All right, that's it! Put me down now! Whoa! Sneak a spooky peek at the ancient Egyptian gods. And you say you also give massages? Oh, oh, You're oh. a dead man, snack bar! Well, if I'm a dead man, then you'll never be rich! Stamford Wharton, don't call him Stan, would be played by Eugene Levy and had other ideas as the repo man coming to take Akbar's stuff due to him not paying his bills. Samford reluctantly agrees to give Akbar one more chance for success and takes a ride on the homemade simulator. I'm talking about making you a partner on the real ride. The one with 60 seats. Not just one, you know, in a big room. And all my four brothers will lift up the room and put it on their shoulders and they're bouncing around vigorously. You know, Omar will show his movies and, and all the rich tourists will give us their money. Hello. Yes, if you become my partner, then you'll become rich like them. All right. Maybe you got a brain behind those good looks. But I want to see the real ride. And it better be good. And, and don't be afraid to freshen up before the big ride, Stan. Don't call me Stan! The Quest Tour vehicles have been completely rethemed to the shady Akbar Tour vehicle, which was supposed to have been crafted from scrounged up materials, including a projector predating movies, as well as mismatched chairs. Oh, I'm tingling with excitement. <laughs> Omar, a little harder, please. One more thing. You see those lights by your feet? Omar, too hard! You see those lights by your feet? Please make sure that you are standing on one, okay? Omar, show me our guests. Good! Also, be sure to take the seatbelt like this and fasten it around your ample tourist midriff, like so. Then please tug on it to make sure it is also tight. We don't want anybody falling out now, do we? <laughs> okay. The rides theme did a great job of showing how homemade the experience was supposed to be. The safety spill would be very reminiscent of Star Tours. Riders could be 42 inches or higher, which offered something for a much larger group of guests than the park's major coasters. Akbar and Stamford would strap in and the tour begins. As expected, it does not go smoothly. Now, get ready for the ride of my life, Akbar's Adventure Tour. <gasps> Omar, turn off the camera. Whoa. Ah. Roll the film, not him. Oh, very good. Our first vacation adventure. And now we are in an ancient Egyptian marketplace, riding one of that fantastic camels. <gasps> one hump or two. <laughs> the simulator heads for an Egyptian market, with the vehicle acting like it was bouncing on top of a camel, and banging into things along the way. Ooh. Oh! 
What the pretty man on the ladder? Are you getting that vacation sensation yet, Stan? Oh. If vacation sensation means that guy in the second row tosses his lunch, you're gonna clean up, Sandbar. Why don't we just call this a technical difficulty and go home? Oh, think again. There is no difficulty too technical for Omar. Oh my, surgeon's touch. Ah! Next will be a tour of ancient pyramid and the Sphinx, flying over the wonder of the world and directly into the Sphinx. Omar calls this the Great Pyramid? Omar Pyramid. Thank you, Omar. How often does this thing crash? Oh, just once, I imagine. Oh, the close one. Uh, the captain has turned on the no smoking sign. And that includes the engine! Oh! your eyes on the coolest cat in the desert, the mighty Sphinx. <laughs> hey, you know something? It almost looks impressive. Oh, a thousand thank yous for that ringing endorsement. Omar is now going to take us for an up-close look. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. ah. Too close. Ah! Thank goodness, our national treasure is in one piece. The next stop will be a tour of a spooky tomb on a minecart track. The cart drops through the tomb when a mystical hand switches the track sending the vehicle the wrong way. You would then encounter a mummy who was not pleased with the intrusion. This was no longer just a simulated tour. It was real. Here, well, well, here we're stuck. If someone give me a hand, anyone? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, an actual animatronic of the mummy would pop out directly above the ride scene for a jump scare. After being thrown into a vortex, a giant snake then attacks. This is no longer a film at all. This is real. This is real. This is real. Oh, this is ah! oh, oh, oh. Everybody, lean back. Lean back. Oh, oh, lean back, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. And Akbar finds some treasure. before another mummy begins to attack and shake the vehicle. It ends with you free falling above the pyramids and landing on the ground before Stan gets a troubled end. You are out of business. Oh, I would not stand. Don't call me Stan. Oh, I was trying to say I would not stand there. Oh, oh. Get this thing off me. He really did hate being called Stan. What a mummy's boy. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm building rich money. My business is saved. Akbar Gardens would now open to the public. Akbar's Garden! <laughs> Akbar's Hotel and Casino! <laughs> the tour definitely wasn't a success, but Akbar's money troubles were definitely no longer a thing. The grand opening was attended by Martin Shaw himself and over 1,000 invited guests. Park Vice President Robin Carson arrived at the opening riding a camel, accompanied by a brass band. Akbar's adventure tour was the first time Busch Gardens dabbled in a heavily themed, story-driven, humorous ride. 
When the park's vice president was asked if this was an attempt to match Universal Studios and Disney in the use of comedy and celebrities, the response was that I don't think we're trying to imitate or copy anybody. We had about 25 ideas for the attraction, and this one was the best. It took a more comedic route due to the involvement of Martin Short and Eugene Levy. Martin Short would become no stranger to theme park attractions. As one of the hosts for the Monster Sound Show at MGM Studios, and later had a part in the making of me, as well as Old Canada and Epcot, along with being the star of my personal favourite, Cinemagique at Disneyland Paris. When asked why he chose to do rides along with film and TV, he said maybe this was more of a Canadian approach to show business, to try and do as many different kind of things, because nothing is as interesting as the first time you do something. Cool simulator. Get ready for the ride of my life. Akbar's Adventure Tours was quite a fun experience from start to finish, fitting the role it needed to play in the parks nicely. As an in-between option for those not wanting to ride the larger coasters, such as Kumba and Mod 2. It was, however, somewhat overshadowed by those rides. While it mixed a simulator with a themed experience, and even included a basic animatronic to scare guests, it never received the fanfare it should or could of. It opened at the park during a time when bigger and better thrills were what were bringing guests in, and the small comedic simulator ride in the corner of Egypt was largely ignored. After just a few years, the ride's manufacturer was now out of business, and it became harder to maintain the attraction. Due to the lack of popularity and high maintenance costs, from 2002, just four years after opening, the ride would begin to operate only during busy periods. From 2002, the ride would be closed during October as the queue and buildings were used for houses during Howlow Screen, the first of which would be Demented Dimensions. In 2007, the ride was finally fully closed, without any recognition and never heard from again. It was slowly removed from the building, and ever since, this building has been used seasonally for Howlow Scream houses, most recently as Insomnia, which stays up year round. Akbar's Adventure Tours was a fun, comedic simulator ride for the whole family. Was it the best ride? No. Was it better than Questor? Maybe. Was it a fun experience, however? Yes, definitely. Well, if you didn't get motion sickness at least. It was 100% cheesy fun. But isn't that the best kind of fun? <laughs> this journey's gonna rock. Get ready for a shock. Akbar. He's the great creator of a way cool simulator. Akbar. Get ready for the ride of my life. Akbar's adventure tour would fit quite well into the Bush Gardens lineup of attractions. A ride that opened during the wrong period of the park's history, and sadly didn't last long before becoming extinct. Akbar's failing business clearly wasn't made for the long term. Today, Akbar's adventure tours is almost completely forgotten, and many who walk by wonder what that unused building by the side of Egypt was for. Even now, remnants of the ride can still be seen around the former entrance. Look closely when you visit the park next, and you can still see signs advertising the exotic sites of Egypt that if you were to join one of Akbar's simulated tours, you could have experienced. As long as you didn't expect it to go exactly according to plan, of course. Oh, oh goodbye now, my adventurous tourist friends. Come back again, I'll be here, and next Akbar adventure on me. Have I mentioned I'm rich? Filthy rich! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Bush Gardens Tampa. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition and follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes. What would you like to see come to Bush Gardens in the future? Let me know in the comments below, and we will see you next time. Money and me, we will be.
Okay.